During the pandemic, the state of Oregon created new rules for hybrid work. A lot of us lived under hybrid work, but they also created rules for remote work, which is a lot different. Remote workers can live anywhere, and our research found they are living all over in places like Iowa, Texas, Hawaii, Florida, and the list goes on and on. They're all full-time workers for the state of Oregon. As part of that state policy, Oregon leaders decided it would only be fair to pay those remote workers for the cost of returning to Oregon if they were needed for an in-person meeting or training. And guess who pays for that? Oh, yes, you do. The Oregon Health Authority responded to our request for information and reported that they have spent $30,848 bringing employees back for various meetings since the policy began. The Department of Human Services had earlier told us they spent $4,000 or so. Now I know, it's not a ton of money compared to the budgets, especially when you look at the size of those agencies, but it is your tax money. If you live or work in Oregon, that's some of your money. Many of you have told us it's a ridiculous policy that you think should be changed immediately. Well, State Senator Tim Canope agrees. He's a Republican, but all the Democrats and all the Republicans in the Senate signed on to support a bill that he wrote. That bill would make employees pay their own way to come back to Oregon if they live outside the state. Yesterday, the bill had its first official public hearing and Canope laid out some of his reasoning. The policy commits state of Oregon and its taxpayers to reimburse travel that I just don't think we should be reimbursing. The examples that were in the press were employees making close to $200,000 a year who had moved to uh, far eastern, southern states. And so I don't want to stop anybody's choice of where they want to live, but I do <coughs> want to make sure that Oregon taxpayers aren't on the hook for their decision. Well, that seems simple enough, right? Well, not so fast. First, the state treasurer's office testified they do support the change and they testified in support of the bill. But then, then it was time for one of Oregon's biggest unions to make their feelings known. Now, love them or hate them, you should know that SEIU 503 has serious power in Oregon. They represent roughly half the state workers in the state, and they don't like the proposed change. Here's the executive director, Melissa Unger. Many folks know that uh, SEIU Local 503 represents state workers, um, about 24,000 state workers. And we do have some concerns with this bill. We are engaging in a conversation about amendments. I think one thing that's really important is that the policy around remote and hybrid work is not a policy that is in our CBA. It is a, it is a policy the state created. Management created this policy, and then workers decided to follow the policy. And so currently, there's workers who have decided to follow a remote work policy where they were told they were not expected to come into their office and that their office is their home. And so they then made life changes based off management's policy around what remote work looked like. So that was the official public statement. Basically, it's your fault. Don't change anything. Now, I don't know what's being said in public, in private, that is, but it is clear the committee chair, Kathleen Taylor, a Democrat from Milwaukee, well, she was very uncomfortable now with her name being on the bill. Senator Knope committed to me that he would be willing to, that he will support an amendment to the bill and then to work with our colleagues. And I think it was his intention all along to work with um, our colleagues um, through DAS and through the uh, public unions. And, you know, so, and so I want to make it clear that my signature on the bill is not for this base bill. Okay. Knope said he is open to talking with unions and making sure the change does not affect bargaining. We'll keep an eye on this one and let you know how it goes. In the meantime, what's your take on the union pushing back like this? Are they just doing a great job protecting their members? Maybe something else? Let me know. Send an email, will you? The address is thestory at kgw.com, or you can call and leave a voicemail. The number is 503-226-5090.